Before we delve into the subject matter of today, I will just quickly talk to you about Stephen Covey's time management matrix, where he classified the things we have to do into urgent and important, urgent but not important, important but not urgent, not urgent and also not important. So an example of a task that is both urgent and important will be, let's say you have a test tomorrow. That's urgent and it's also very important because it will play a role in deciding whether you probably pass that class on the long run or not. If you make mistakes in all the tests and you don't do very well, then the entire picture might be having an issue or something. The second is something that is urgent but not important. Let's say you're scheduled to have a volleyball practice tomorrow. That's urgent, but looking at the broader picture in line with your academics, it's not important unless you, you are probably a professional volleyball player and you have a medal, you have something attached, a monetary value attached to a final game, for instance. But generally speaking, just a regular volleyball practice tomorrow is urgent, but it's not so important. For the important but not urgent, let's say you have a test in a month's time. This test is the final test for your posting and it's 12 marks out of everything. It's very important, but it's not so urgent. So it's something that you can take your time out, plan very well and still get it right. Now the not important, not urgent task, mindlessly scrolling through social media. I know some of you will feel like maybe I have an issue with social media now. No, I don't. But just that I really feel it's a time waster. It takes your time, it takes your data, indirectly your money. And really, if you're not doing a business, if you're not benefiting anything actively, you should not be spending excess time on social media. So all the time spent watching entertainment, all those, they fall into the not urgent, not important task. And these are things you can schedule for any other time and take all the time you have left into the first three categories that I talked about. Now, delving into time management proper, you will need the tips I'll be sharing with you. I'll categorize them into two, the general tips and the specific tips when it comes to studying. The first tip I want to talk to you about is the ability to say no. Yes, a lot of persons don't have the strength to actually give no as an answer. If you have your goals set out, you've made a plan, no one should just randomly come into the scene and tell you, you need to do this, you have to do this, or let's go somewhere, let's go somewhere, no. You have to create an atmosphere where people know that they can't just bump into your plan anyhow. Unless it's very serious, a very serious situation that will require you abandoning the plan you have, that you have to move for. But generally speaking, if you're even contemplating what or no, that might already be, be an insight into the fact that you're being emotional in giving that response. But the logical answer in most instances will be no. If persons want to get into your schedule, they have to get information prior to time. So yes, master the art of saying no. Number two, use a to-do list. Your brain is for ideas and really not for storing them. So you have an idea, you want to do something, you have to explain something, whatever it is, even if you're a content creator, whatever you're doing, make sure you have a book where you keep everything that has come into your head to plan, to schedule, and don't just believe that you would remember. Keeping a to-do list does something for you. It just keeps you in check, especially when you attach maybe an alarm clock or a kind of reminder system to everything you've put in that to-do list. So make sure you have a to-do list handy, either an analog one or a digital one. I use both, so you can download any of the to-do lists apps on Google Play Store or the Apple Store, depending on the device you use. But make sure you're using a to-do list. Number three would be the Parkinson's Law. Now, Parkinson's Law simply states that work expands to fill the time you create for it. So let's say you have a research paper to do. If you tell yourself in three months, I'll be done with this paper. In three months, you'll be done. If you tell yourself in one month, most likely in one month, you'll be done. So don't give too much time to a task that can actually be done in less time. Assess it critically and decide what is the appropriate time for me to get this task done, that I can still do it excellently well, where I don't spend too much time actually working on that particular task. Number four, especially for those of you who are leaders, learn to delegate. If you have a penchant for excellence, one of the challenges you'll face is the feeling of, I want to do it all by myself. So you have people who are working with you, but you're carrying all the burden because you feel they may not do it so well. And 
that some you were just like them you were not born into that perfect you had to learn to grow into the perfection you're talking about now so you're also indirectly denying the opportunity to learn have that penchant for excellence but make delegating responsibilities which will also give others the chance to grow and then you have time to do other things in the bible moses father-in-law i believe you know just gave him that insight and wisdom when he saw he was so burdened taking all the cases that the israelites had to tell him about and he told him to create elders noble men respectable people from all the groups and the clans that were there and should make them judges over them only the very important cases or the very dicey ones were brought to him so you need to have that kind of system in mind number five use protected time now protected time is a time when nobody should disturb you essentially once it's this particular time let's say it's four hours or six hours you know you want to have deep focus help yourself maybe by putting your phone on airplane mode or having your friends those especially in your immediate environment need to be aware of this protected time you're free to disturb me at any other time but once it's between this time and this time please it's a do not disturb notice for me so use protected time it's going to help you a lot for me this was probably like saturdays uh, and i did that by most times leaving the school hostel environment and going somewhere else where little or nobody knew me and i just have time to myself keep the phone aside and focus get what needs to be done and move ahead number six minimize social media again i'm not on the social media but it's just the fact social media takes a lot of time some days you're feeling you didn't have enough time and then you check your phone's timer whatever it's called on your phone that helps you monitor how much you're spending on the apps and by the time you put everything together the time spent on twitter the time spent on facebook the time spent on instagram the time spent on snapchat the time spent on tiktok see i'm even already already exhausted mentioning all of them and then you put everything together and it's like six hours seven hours and you're complaining you did not have enough time really so you see your time is going into other places that you may not want it to go what you can do is Maybe just tell yourself on Saturday, okay, I'm going to spend some good amount of time on social media. On every other day, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, you're done. It's enough. Get productive and do other very important things with your time. Number seven, schedule everything. Now, this is similar to, let's say, using a to-do list. To-do list speaks about the daily goals, while scheduling everything is like for a month, for three months, Put everything into perspective, write them down. This was something I did for the semesters, for the sessions when I was in school. Put everything that you can possibly remember into perspective. Yes, you're going to be updating it as time goes on, but it gives you a sense of a clear sense of direction as regards what you're supposed to be doing every time. And it makes you a very efficient person because you're not going to be forgetting to attend meetings online or physical. The little task you're supposed to do, the promises you've made, if you put everything into your schedule, you're going to be very, very efficient and effective as a human being. So don't before the brain is for ideas, not to store them. Don't believe that your brain will remember everything. In fact, that's too much burden to place on the brain. So make sure you're scheduling everything as possible. Number eight, do the little tasks in bulk. Now your group tasks and do them together let's say you want to listen to an audio podcast you can do that while washing your clothes you can do things 14 sometimes at a time just those little tasks here and there put them together the ones that can be combined together so you're listening to the audio podcast you're doing your laundry probably cooking doing what you need to do just carry them simultaneously and that's going to save you a lot of time buy you a lot of time in Number nine, automated scheduling. Now, this one talks specifically about meetings. If you're the type that is a very busy person and you tend to engage in a lot of meetings, there's some, an app called Calendly. It helps create, a, following the pattern of how you've worked over time, you can select the times you're free on, a, on particular days. So instead of negotiating with someone 
physically or spending time trying to plan when you're free you can just send the person the link to your own schedule on calendly and the person sees the free times for the different days of the week and he or she just picks a time and then they send you an email saying okay this person has scheduled a meeting with you on social day that you're actually free and then you get to accept and that's it another body taking off your brain. So these are the general tips you want to have in mind if you want to manage your time appropriately. Now coming down to study tips, very important. Number one, avoid cramming. Now cramming in the short term might seem very efficient, but it's not so true because anything you cram now that you did not understand, when it's time for exam, you would have to cram it again. When it's time for the personal exam, you have to also cram it again. As against when, and then also, the pattern of the exams can change and it may not be an exam where you're just being assessed based on knowledge. If you cram without understanding, if the level of cognition for that exam is stepped up to, stepped up to comprehension or application, that student will fail woefully. So not just about time management, cramming generally speaking is a very ineffective means of studying unless you've understood the concept for that particular or course. But when you're something when you have to read it when you have to memorize it next time it's going to be super 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 fast students who understand are the ones that would always finish the scheme when it's time to prepare for the professional exam that you get to read everything again but those who were cramming will still want to go the cramming pathway but they will find out that it's not so easy and even if they successfully do it they might just be having borderline scores but if you focus on understanding now in future you're going to be very fast you save a lot of time and you'll also or higher so try to understand before you memorize number two for studying learn how to study effectively by using study techniques like speed reading active recall and spaced repetition i'll go again speed reading active recall and spaced repetition speed reading just talks about reading fast active recall means retrieving the information from your memory without looking at the source where it is written or where you listen to it and then Finally, space repetition talks about certain durations in between how much you review a material. There are three separate videos on these three reading strategies I've mentioned. You want to watch out at the end of this video. You pick any one you want to watch first and then you watch it. The is use your downtime for studying. Now, if you feel like you have excess time to rest, you've spoken with your friends, don't what you need to do with your family, you're well rested, fine, pick up that material, pick up the book, get ahead. Weekends, the breaks, the days, summer holidays, whatever you have at your disposal, utilize them to study and get ahead. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. So start where you are in that particular time you have that is extra, mid-term break, Utilize it, get ahead, and then that will save you time and energy in future when other persons might be skimpering into catching up with the schedule and the workload that they have for that particular semester. Next is try to understand everything taught during lectures. Now, those students who sit in front and pay rapt attention while a class is going on can tell you that when they get back home, the work they have to do sometimes is reduced by half. As against those who are just gisting and playing behind and they get back home and in fact they are trying to understand everything again. But there are this group of students who are sitting in front. Well, they may not always sit in front, maybe somewhere in the middle, but they found a way to make sure that they are focused from the beginning of the lectures up until the end of the lectures. And you see them asking questions. Once they get home, because of how engaged their minds were and because they were paying attention, trying to understand what it was is in their focus, the goal now is just to make sure they can recall everything probably for that day, review it at a later time. But if you are not paying attention, you first of all have to understand and then you now try to memorize. So paying attention during lectures will save you a lot of time positively on the long run. The next is do not study in an environment where everyone has access to you. I know this can be difficult, but you can make use of the library if you have one in your environment a quiet space, a quiet niche you've created for yourself. Or maybe you make use of a classroom that is not so breezy, wherever you are. But if you are in a space where everyone has access to you, in between 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, someone is coming to talk to you, get you distracted, and then sometimes you just in conversations for an hour, two hours, before you taking the time, 10 p.m. is 11 p.m. Don't what you need to do 
for that day. So create an environment where not everyone has time alone and actually the work to be done. The next is put on your game face. This can be mean sometimes. Now this is when you find yourself in an environment where people have access to you. Because I read in class for the most part in school, I used to do this on most of the nights that I got to use the classes to study. So the game face is like a straight face. Yeah, you greet people, but then it's more like you're not smiling. You're just keeping a serious face. And it sends this message like, okay, I'm not really up for just now. It's not being wicked, but you're just trying to create a system that will make you be very efficient and you maximize the time that you have for that particular day. So put on your game face. Next is, if you study in a location that is not your room, try to have all you need, at least within the environment. So when I say all you need, you might want to use the restroom at some point. So there should be a restroom not too far from that location. You might need to just get snacks. Is it that you carry it to the library or you take it to the class where you want to study? Or there should be somewhere close by where you can get it without having to go to and fro and you end up spending an hour or two hours just because you needed to get something. So everything you need should be within your reach, within your immediate environment. The next is use the pocket of time you have effectively. Now, there is so much time in 24 hours. I hope that's correct, but you get the point. There is so much time within the time you have, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. So while you're on the way, you're in the bus, you're in the class, the lecturer hasn't come, all that time people are just in. When you add everything up at the end of the day, on some days it might amount up to three hours. So if you do this, imagine every day of the week, let's say five days you go to school, that's 15 hours. At the end of the month, you saved about 130 hours, 120 hours rather, in four weeks. So you see, there is so much time. All those pockets of time that people spend just in, if you want to be very productive it's not like if you don't do this you won't get good grades and all but you want to make this a habit so that consistently every area of your life that you need to be efficient in you're functioning at that efficiency you so desire so utilize all the pockets of time that you have the next is be satisfied with how much you spend your time so you don't have that negative feedback that people have and you're beating yourself up every night i didn't use my time effectively today you carry that lag into the next day you're upset and all no for most days just be okay give yourself a pat on the back and tell yourself you're doing well and you can get better at your game so that's the end of the tips for time management in summary time management is a prerequisite for you to achieve your goals for you to fulfill the plans you've set towards achieving that goals and for you to have a very wonderful medical school experience where you're covering all the syllabus that you have to study and you're actually going to those exams you're not tensed feeling you may not remember something or you didn't cover a part of a course and everything all of this would depend on the foundation of time management so take it seriously it's something you want to keep in mind in the next video would be any of the reading strategies speed reading active recall space repetition whichever one you want to pick and watch please feel very free to watch if you know you learned one or two things from this video please give it a thumbs up share with your colleagues subscribe to this channel and i'll see you on the next video thank you